From around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of Postgres Vision 2021. Brought to you by EDB. Well, hi everybody, John Walls here on theCUBE, and we're now welcoming Jeremy Wilmot, who is the Chief Product Officer at ACI Worldwide, part of the Postgres uh, uh, movement, you might say, or certainly uh, benefiting from the great value that Postgres is providing a uh, number of enterprises across the globe. Jeremy, good to see you today. And uh, first off, congratulations. You are the first guest I've talked to maybe in a year and a half in their office. So good for you. Hey, <laughs> John. That's very kind of you, John, and, and great to see you, and, and thanks for having me here. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's great to be in the office. It really is. I'm here in Miami and South Florida, and, uh, and getting some sort of normality back is, is, is great for all of us, and, and I'm certainly enjoying it. So thank well, you. Look forward yeah. to seeing you here soon, soon. I'm sure you are. Yeah, congratulations on that front. Um, first off, let's talk about ACI Worldwide. Uh, for the folks in sure. our audience that aren't familiar with the payments, uh, uh, your role in terms of that payment uh, ecosystem. Tell us a little bit about ACI Worldwide. Sure. Well, primarily we're a software company. That's, uh, that's ACI. We started uh, 1975 in Omaha, Nebraska, uh, built the first debit card system and ATM system uh, for First National Bank of Omaha. And, and over the last 45 years, we've uh, globalized ourselves. Uh, we, ha we are delivering mission critical real-time payment systems across the world uh, to banks, uh, to merchants, to billers. Uh, we help them meet the payment needs of their consumers and their corporates. Um, so we, we process, manage digital payments. Uh, we power omni-commerce and e-commerce payments. We mm -hmm. present and process bill payments. Uh, we manage fraud, we manage the risk uh, all within that, and, and as I said, on a global basis, 13 of the G20 countries uh, with a leading um, DDA account or current account, uh, payment processing software uh, in those countries and have been for many years. So as the, as the CPO then, uh, quite obviously in, in the financial space, uh, your plate is quite full <laughs> these days uh, in terms of providing for your client base. Um, how would you characterize maybe the evolution in terms of product development that you've been through in, in the financial world here over the past, say three to five years, you know, where were you back then to where you are now and what role has Postgres played in that journey? Sure, yeah. Um, so specific to the Postgres part of, of the ecosystem, um, Previously, five plus years ago, uh, our previous database solution uh, was, was complex. Uh, it was expensive. It was uh, hard to uh, change and maintain. Uh, and we leveraged multiple pieces of software uh, from multiple vendors uh, uh, as a result of that. So at that time, we looked for an alternative uh, that was simpler and, and better. Uh, and we went through a, a very comprehensive due diligence process. Um, we explored both open source and licensed uh, models of database uh, to support our solution. Uh, and when we looked at all of the options, uh, we determined that second quadrant Postgres uh, was, the, was the one that provided the most comprehensive solution we were looking for. It, it had the right mix of, of capabilities and performance um, uh, at the right uh, total cost of ownership uh, that we were looking for. And, and, you know, in the payments world, as you can imagine, you've got to be 24, seven, 365. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we also required a lower cost of ownership than we had before, but we also wanted a greater um, flexibility uh, and time to market that we could pass on to our customers. Um, and then the last thing I'd, I'd say that we were looking for was, was a multi deployment capability. And, and what I mean by that is, is that we would be able to use this new platform, Postgres platform in our own data centers in our own private cloud, but we could also deploy it in the public cloud, uh, whether we would run it or whether our customers would run it. Uh, we wanted that ability to, to mix and match between these different deployment options. So you've talked about um, a, a lot of key elements here, right? Uh, attributes in terms of availability, yeah. accessibility, reliability, um, um, security, 
obviously. Um, walk us through those and, and in terms of why you think, you know, second quadrant was addressing your needs in, in those particular areas or any others for that matter, but what it was that checked the box specifically uh, about what Postgres was offering you as opposed to what these other possible solutions and services were that you were looking at. Yeah, I think, um, you know, we're very focused on being able to identify what our customers need. Uh, and, and when they're offering services to consumers uh, and to their corporates, what is it that they require uh, that's going to enable them to win and compete? Um, and, and payments industry uh, has a lot of cost pressures within it. It has regulation, it has consumer convenience and, 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 uh, and, and the whole movement of digitalization that puts a lot of downward pressure uh, on the cost base. And those who are going to win in the payment space need to be able to uh, address that. So that that uh, is relevant for our banks, for our merchants, uh, for the billers. Uh, they all come under um, very similar regulatory pressure and, and market pressure. And as a result, the ability to, to reduce dramatically uh, in a very significant way, the total cost of ownership upon which payment software was going to be operating, you know, that was one of the key uh, elements uh, that, that was very important to us uh, as, as we made the decision. The second one, <clears throat> I think, was to enable us to be able to do what we are good at and what our customers expect us to do. And that in turn enables them to focus on, you know, their core competencies. We're a software company. Uh, we own our own IP. Uh, we'll manage uh, our own software uh, for the needs of the 24 by 7, 365 uh, uh, payment uh, requirements. And therefore, the merchant or the biller uh, or the bank uh, can really focus in on the digital experience for their customers. Mm -hmm. uh, focusing on their core competencies uh, and what they uh, need to do to win. Um, that was uh, a second key factor for us. I think the third one uh, for us was, was as well speed to market. Speed to market for ourselves uh, in being competitive to the alternative to ACI, but also uh, more importantly, uh, speed to market for our customers. Um, and um, there are, the payments world is is highly regulated, um, requires significant certification in order to launch new services. That's often the long pole in the tent. So we want to be able to get to that point as quickly as possible uh, and be able to have uh, public cloud deployment, open systems capabilities uh, that would really allow us to pass on that speed to market. Uh, to those customers. So for example, an acquirer, a payment acquirer moving into a new geographical country they, they want to compete in, uh, they can steal a march on their competitors uh, by launching minimum viable products in six to nine months mm -hmm. uh, versus five years ago, that could have been a 24 to 30 months um, um, endeavor for them to uh, take on. So I, you know, those were important considerations for us uh, as we were uh, choosing our, our long-term partner uh, for the Postgres world and the, and the public cloud world. Obviously, too, you've talked a lot about your relationships with your clients, right? And, and I know you have a, a really keen awareness of the, of the need to, uh, to ensure uh, that trust, to ensure that reliability, to ensure uh, the collaboration. How about your relationship on the other side with EDB and in terms of all those elements? So how has that evolved over a period of time and what kind of service and what kind of value do you think are you deriving from that relationship now? Yeah, yeah. So with EDB, um, first of all, our, our journey started with second quadrant uh, and now EDB uh, and we, were specifically looking at the uh, one area was at the um, bi-directional replication or BDR uh, that we were uh, wanting to support uh, with our solutions, uh, particularly in the public cloud. And that was going to enable us to replace multiple pieces of software uh, from multiple vendors. Uh, and 
So we worked to create that solution uh, that was, was right for ACI. Uh, it was right for our customers from a functionality uh, and agility and a, and a cost perspective. So, so technologically with the non-functional requirements uh, and, and the um, reliability, availability, serviceability uh, aspects that we were looking for, uh, that was in, in partnership with Second Quadrant and EDB, that was uh, a key element. I think the second piece of it is we work really well uh, with, with um, Second Quadrant EDB in terms of um, partnering to meet the needs of the market. It's, it's great to have the right technology in place, but then you need your partners really to be able to work with you uh, tactically real time in order to win in the market and make it work. Uh, and, you know, I found that, uh, you know, that they've been a great partner uh, for us to be able to do that uh, and to be able to um, um, react quickly, do the right thing uh, and, 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 and really enable us to be a great partner uh, to our customers uh, as we deliver real time uh, payments, as we deliver the acquiring uh, capabilities as, as we deliver modernization uh, for the big banks that we work with as well. Oh, before I let you go, I want, I, I'm going to give you a two part question here. Uh, that's always one way to squeeze a little more info <laughs> out of the guests. Yeah. Um, <laughs> f f first off advice, uh, you've been through this transformation. Obviously you're very happy with, with all that has transpired. So your advice to others who are considering this journey. Okay. And then, and then secondly, what can they and you, do you think, expect in terms of future challenges, opportunities, however you might want to frame that with Postgres? Like where are we going from here basically? So two parts, advice, and then where do you think this is headed? Sure. Um, so advice, uh, I, I certainly learnings from us versus advice <laughs> uh, is that number one, you know, be very thorough in the due diligence that you do uh, and, and be very clear on what you want uh, and what are your goals that you're looking for. Uh, so from an ACI perspective, we were clear uh, that total cost of ownership uh, in terms of the stack that we were going to be providing to our customers, that was very important, number one. Number two, uh, non-functional requirements. So I've talked about the mission criticality of payments, 24, 7, 365. That was a, a key second piece. And then the third one, uh, ease of deployment. Uh, I talked about that, uh, you know, multi-cloud deployment um, that, that we were looking for. Um, so we were clear what we wanted um, and we, we took our time uh, from a due diligence point of view. It's a, it's a multi-year decision uh, being made. So it's not something specifically I think you want to uh, rush into. In terms of looking forward uh, and where do we go from here, um, you know, performance, is critical. So further performance enhancements, uh, ability for uh, rapid failover, uh, uh, you know, availability, uh, at near 100% availability uh, that we're looking for, five nines and above, uh, working together uh, with Postgres in order to, you know, make those failovers more seamless because they they'll happen. Um, particularly in the real-time payments world where we're now seeing billions of transactions happening uh, in a week and soon that'll be in a day uh, that we'll need to be able to um, deal with. And for all of this to happen in a public cloud environment, we, we I think, all understand a lot of the benefits of public cloud um, and we uh, need to be able to provide this failover availability capability in the public cloud, but also in a hybrid uh, cloud environment or in a multi uh, cloud environment. So we need to keep working that uh, and, and make that make that happen. That will that will make Postgres a payment grade uh, um, um, infrastructure uh, that could power the world's real time payments. Uh, and, and we would love to you know, be able to be able to do that into the future. Well, Jeremy, thanks for the insights. Uh, we appreciate that. And, and once again, congratulations on getting back in that office. I know it's a, it's probably a pretty welcomed uh, addition to your regimen now. Yeah, John, thank you very much. Uh, and thanks to everyone who's dialed in for this. And uh, John, look forward to welcoming me in the office soon. soon. Thanks right, a lot. Very good, sir. Look forward to that as well. I'll take you up on that in Miami for sure.
John Wallace here on the Absolutely. Cube, talking with Jeremy Wilmot, who's the Chief Product Officer at ACI Worldwide, part of our post-credits finish in 2021 coverage. Thank you.